Let's spend a little bit of time now talking about something that you're going to run across whenever you're doing circuit analysis. You've learned nodal analysis, you've learned mesh analysis, and as we mentioned before, either technique can be used to solve any two-dimensional circuit, which is basically any circuit you're going to see in an introductory circuits course. But the question is, if you have a choice of nodal versus mesh analysis, which do you choose if either one can solve a circuit for you? Well, here's the way you want to think about it. You want to choose the technique that gives you the fewest number of equations. So what do you want to look at? You want to look at KCL equations versus KVL. Here's a way to think about it. In general, not always, but in general, you can kind of make an estimate based on this. For nodal analysis, take the number of essential nodes. So count the number of essential nodes in the circuit, subtract one of them as ground, and then look and see if you can also subtract any essential nodes because they're defined by a voltage source. So take that, make that estimate, and that will give you the number of KCL equations. Now that may, may not be all of the equations you need, there may be constraint equations, there may be dependent source variables, but at least right off the bat you'll have an idea of where you're going to be in the ballpark. Then for mesh, what do you do? For mesh, you count the number of meshes. And then you subtract the number of defined meshes due to a current source. And if you do that, you will have the number of KVL equations. Now once again, that may not be all the equations you need. You may, of course, need dependent source variable and constraint equations. But this gives you a rough idea. So you look at these two numbers, which is smaller, the number of KCL or the number of KVL. And in general, the smaller of those two numbers is going to be the technique you want to use. So let's look at a possible example here. Let's look at a circuit. And let's see how we can make this estimate and do the trade-off here. Let's say we've got the following circuit. Okay, so this circuit, I want to find Ix. How do I do that? Well, I have a choice. Nodal analysis versus mesh analysis. And let's assume this is a problem where you've been basically told use any technique you wish. So you can choose either one, which one makes more sense. Okay, if I were approaching this nodally, probably the smart place to put my ground would be here at the bottom. Because if I put the ground here at the bottom, that means this node becomes minus 20 volts. This node becomes 10 volts. And I am left with only one undefined essential node. <laughs> 
that means only one KCL equation in order to solve. Now let's think about this from a mesh point of view. So from a mesh point of view, what do I have here? I've got, in this case, three meshes. So I would need a mesh current here. I would need a mesh current here. I would need a mesh current here. Three meshes. Now, you can look at this and say, but Dr. Holman, I've got a dependent source between the a dependent current source between those two meshes. Can I make that into a super mesh? You can. Then you've got two mesh equations. So anyway, you, the way you look at it here, if you're doing mesh, you're either going to have three or two with a super mesh. KVL equations. So what do you pick? Obviously you pick nodal analysis. Nodal analysis will give you the simplest solution with only one nodal equation, one KCL equation, plus of course you'll also need your dependent source variable equation as well. Okay, so I'm not going to bother to write the equations to work this out, but I'll go ahead and tell you if you're interested that in this case, let's see, Ix will be equal to minus 3 amps. So if you want to, you can actually go through and work this if you want and solve this for yourself. And whether you work with nodal or mesh, you should get that answer. Okay? Now, note something I want to point out. In a circuit with voltage sources, typically nodal analysis will be the better choice because voltage sources constrain nodes. So if I can pick a good spot to put my ground, I will eliminate nodes, I'll define them. So if you see a circuit and it's got a lot of voltage sources in it, then nodal analysis is almost always the best way to go. Let's look at another example. And in this case, let's look at this circuit. So for this circuit, I want to find the value of I1. How do I solve this circuit? Okay, once again, number of KVL versus number of KCL. So looking at this particular circuit, all right, I've got one, two, three, four essential nodes. These nodes are non-essential. So if I were going to solve this circuit, I would need to pick a ground node, and probably this node is the best because it's got a voltage source there. And then I would count one, two, three non-essential nodes. And I can't really sim simplify it any further than that, or rather one, two, three essential nodes. And I really can't simplify it any further than that. So for nodal, I'll have three essential nodes, which means three KCL equations. What about mesh? 
Ah, mesh is different. Notice I've got two current sources here. And so in this case, what I've got is, I'm going to call this one IA. I'm going to go along with that dependent current source. I'm going to call this one IB once again in the same direction as that current source. And here I'm going to call this one IC. And what do I note? IA and IB are defined. IA is equal to 3I1. IB is equal to 0 0.5 amps. And let me show you a little shortcut people will use on problems like this. When you have a defined mesh, lots of times people will just do this. They won't bother to write IA. They'll just go ahead and write 3I1. That's the mesh current. Why give it a variable name? Over here, they'll say, this is half an amp. 0 0.5 amps. So really, all you have to write is that IC. That's the only unknown KVL, the only unknown mesh current, and therefore it's the only KVL equation you need. So in this case, you've got for mesh analysis, you've got one KVL equation. And so therefore, mesh is the way to do it. And if you go through and solve this, what you should get is that I1 is equal to minus 0 0.714 amps. And again, I'll let you go ahead and work the problem and write this as a practice, but that's the answer you should get for I1. Now note here, when I work this problem, we have lots of current sources. In general, a circuit with lots of current sources is a circuit that will probably lend itself to mesh analysis because current sources constrain mesh currents. So voltage sources constrain node voltages, current sources constrain mesh currents, and in either case you're going to make the problem simpler. So in this case mesh is the way to go. All right. What if I did this? Let's do this example. Okay, I'm asked to find Vx for this circuit. Once again, you have the choice, nodal or mesh, which do you use? Okay, let's look at this from a nodal point of view. I've got one, two, three, four essential nodes. I'm going to ground the bottom here because if I do that, that becomes 12 volts. And that means I've got one, two undefined mesh currents, which means two KCL equations. So for nodal, I've got two KCL. What about if I did this with a mesh? Well, if I did this with mesh analysis, what would I have? Well, in this case, this mesh current's defined. That's 2.5 amps because of that current source. And in that case, I've got one, two undefined meshes, and therefore I will have for mesh two KVL equations. So which technique do I choose? Which one do I choose? Flip a coin. Equally difficult or equally easy with either technique. So at this point, it's your choice. <laughs> 
But many times on an exam or on a homework problem, if you spend just a moment, count the number of undefined meshes versus the number of undefined essential nodes. And you can very quickly usually figure out how to choose the method that's going to give you the quickest and fastest and easiest solution. Okay, and if you go through and solve this, once again, just for the sake of completeness, you'll find that Vx is equal to minus 15.6 volts. And again, it's a good idea to go through and just practice and make sure you do get that answer regardless of whether you do it with mesh or nodal. All right, so in general, it's always a good idea. Before you jump into any problem, look at it first because quite often you can spot something that may make that problem much easier than if you just run right into it. It can make the, di make the difference between several equations versus one or two equations. All right? So this kind of covers all of our mesh and nodal analysis work. What we're going to now do is, from, now, from, from this point on, we're going to start applying more advanced circuit analysis techniques. But nodal and mesh analysis are going to be the basic fundamental techniques that underlie these more advanced circuit theorems we're going to learn about. And we'll start on that next time.